This week I'm reviewing the Super Scope game Battle Clash. Now the games I've reviewed so far for the Super Scope peripheral have mostly been disappointing, but can this game buck the trend? Now if you have been following my review of every single game that supports the Super Scope peripheral, then you'll know by now of the overuse of the side-scrolling arcade shooter template. But finally, we're sort of free from the shackles of single direction scrolling, with a game that can only be described as a mix of Nintendo's Punch-Out, The Running Man and a scrapyard full of combat mechs. The result is a much more interesting type of light gun game from what we've used the experience so far for the Super Scope. So where does my comparison with Punch-Out come from? Nintendo's arcade boxing classic employs the visage of a boxing game, but in reality it's just a series of one-on-one -on -one boss fights based around identifying attack patterns and weak points before exploiting them to win. This description suits Battle Clash perfectly. The only difference is that the setting is more fantastical and the control mechanics are completely distinct due to the use of the Super Scope Bazooka. Set in a futuristic world where gigantic mechs named Standing Tanks, or STs for short, battle one another in the unimaginatively named Battle Games. And when craft this gargantuan tussle, you know they aren't too worried about the Marquis of Queensbury rules, as the big guns really do come out. Out of every orifice, it seems. The setup is simple, as you take each opponent on in a one-on-one -on -one format, blowing the ever-loving crapola out of them before they endeavour to do the same to you. But this isn't all about fire and forget tactics, oh no not at all. Your basic attacks involve a rapid fire machine gun weapon that is your bread and butter move, but when you aren't firing, a gauge feels to allow for a single, more efficient shot. When you're up against moving targets and a flurry of incoming enemy bullets, there is an excellent balance between having to use the machine gun to nullify enemy attacks and using charge shots to cause some real damage to your foe. Then there is the issue of where to actually land your attacks. Sure, your foes have weak points that are susceptible to focused shots, but they're not exactly going to tell you where they are. And a lot of the fun with Battle Clash is finding the chinks in each enemy's armor, while stopping their attacks from connecting with you. Each opponent is a different pilot, and each one has something to say before and after bouts. Now, it ain't exactly a compelling narrative, but at least it moves the game along. Each ST is unique in their design, and in some cases their form deteriorates as they take more damage. They all have different attacks, and as the game goes on, new types of attacks come into play, and once again, there's a little learning curve to defending yourself from them. There are also single-use power-ups that are occasionally earned as you defeat enemy STs, such as bomb attacks and homing weapons. Once again, there is a bit of strategy involved as you try and figure out the best way to use these items. Something that is worth mentioning is that it's a testament to the Super Scope's accuracy that, despite some weak points being very, very small, you never feel like your attacks aren't connecting. In addition, the Scope's bazooka-like form fits perfectly with the idea of being in a large mech and taking down other mechs, resulting in that absolute rarity of a Super Scope game being fun to play. It is a relatively short game, provided you know what you're doing, the whole thing can be over in about 30 minutes, although that could be seen as a good or bad thing. Possibly bad in terms of value, even if there is a time trial mode for beating your best clear times, and additional difficulty settings available by pressing L and select together on the title screen, a code you are told about once you finish the game. But considering how the Super Scope can be uncomfortable to use during extended play sessions, maybe the whole thing being over in half an hour is best to avoid the symptoms of Super Scope shoulder, a medical term I have literally just made up, but it should absolutely exist. Happy Medium would have been a longer game with a password or battery backup system to save progress. Thankfully, this game's sequel, Metal Combat Falcon's Revenge, just happens to have battery backup, but that is another story for another review video coming soon. But in this day and age, there is nothing really wrong with an old game taking a little less time to finish, especially when that shorter experience can be a thrilling and compelling one. And that unlockable hard mode really sorts out the men from the boys. Even the first stage of the game becomes a frantic battle of wits where you really will die quickly if you aren't at the top of your game. It's certainly not a mode for everybody. Battle Clash could have easily been a very basic light gun game, but mercifully, it's much more than that. By stripping back the number of combatants and turning it into a tactical one-on-one -on -one shooter, this title becomes a much more interesting, memorable and ultimately fun experience. Accurate shooting mechanics, a fun mix of action and strategy, as well as being very simple to pick up and play. 
quite short and somewhat lacking in challenge, at least without the hard mode code that you aren't told about till you beat the game. Probably one of the best Super Skype games out there, this is a breath of fresh air in a world of cookie cutter light gun games. Well worth checking out if you're looking to dust off that Super Scope. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this and want more, you can click this icon to subscribe, this icon to support me financially via Patreon, or these icons to watch more videos from my channel. Why not take a few seconds to answer the question of the week in the comments, or just let me know what you thought of this video. See you next week.